How's it going, CPAC? Or I heard someone earlier phrase it a little bit better. TPAC. That's what it feels like, guys. Well, first and foremost, it's awesome to be here. It's great to see this kind of enthusiasm. And it's great to actually be in a full room. Uh, you know, honestly, guys, what I see in Florida right now is exemplary of the Republican Party, right? This is a state like the party is that has open schools, open businesses, and open churches. What we've seen in some of the more left-leaning states is exactly the opposite. The only thing that they have open is open borders. And it doesn't work, guys. In the first 30 days of Joe Biden's presidency, all of the things that I said would come true in the book Liberal Privilege that I wrote last summer are happening. We listened to months of media telling us that Joe Biden, he's a moderate, don't worry. He's not going to end energy. He's not going to end pipelines, which is partially correct. He's not going to end Russian pipelines. He's only going to end American pipelines. The Russian ones are just fine. They're going to cave to China. No, that was never going to happen. Of course it happened. You think that billion dollar investment in Hunter came for free? No, the Chinese, the Chinese have a great return on investment. But guys, more importantly, who would have thought that within 33 days we'd be bombing the Middle East again? I would have. Oh no, guys, come on, the military industrial complex? I'm surprised it took them 33 days. I guess they waited till the first month, so they couldn't say that was part of the first 30, but it was only shortly thereafter where we started bombing the Middle East. Speaking of bombing the Middle East, have you seen Liz Cheney's poll numbers? <laughs> no, listen, the one thing I'll say for Liz Cheney is I'm sure she has a lot of bipartisan support because if there's one thing that she and Joe Biden definitely want to do, it's bomb the Middle East. Everything else is a disaster. Everything else is just rhino policies, the kinds of policies that put the Republican Party in a position where they needed a Donald Trump. No, seriously. Liz Cheney and her politics are only slightly less popular than her father is at a quail hunt. <laughs> what? Fact checkers, fact checkers, please have at it. Fact check, true. Right? Listen, like I said, Liz Cheney, she hates Donald Trump and his policies because her family has a long history of friendly fire. But she also hates them because she's tied to an establishment that has done nothing but fail us time and time again. You've heard the rhetoric from some of them over the last couple weeks, and now you've seen that change very quickly. Because if there's one thing the Republican Party has been really good at over the last few decades is snatching defeat from the jaws of victory. They've caved to every special interest. They've caved to corporate America. They've caved and bowed to the radical left that hates their guts, hates their values, and hates their freedoms. Lincoln Project Liz, as I'd like to call her, is the leader of that failed movement. And if we want to go back to losing, if we want to go back to an America last policy, we should be following that. But I don't, and I don't think anyone in this room does either. So you know what, guys? The first 30 days has been a disaster. The lies the media told you wouldn't happen are all happening. But hey, at least they have a diverse cabinet. Right? 
No, yeah, it, it's very diverse. That's what we saw, right? What is the policy of the SBA? Well, first and foremost, we appointed a woman. Well, that's wonderful. Is she competent? Because there's competent women and there's incompetent women, just like there's competent men and incompetent men. We've seen that. We know that to be a fact. But when you don't have policy to address the incompetence and think you can get away with it by just talking about diversity blindly, it's sort of a problem, isn't it? This month, this month alone, they've banned the Muppets. Right? I mean, if there's things that you thought were sort of above cancellation, you would be wrong. <laughs> there is nothing the radical left won't cancel. Hasbro now wants a gender neutral Mr. Potato Head. <laughs> These are the issues of our times, folks. I mean, if Hasbro really wanted a gender neutral Mr. Potato Head so badly, they should just slap a picture of CNN's Brian Slettler on the cover of their next potato. What? They don't call him Mr. Potato Head for nothing. I mean, you know, we might as well get something out of the branding. But guys, we can talk about all of these things. We can talk about the liberal hypocrisy, liberal privilege. Just look at how magically, in 33 days, children in cages turned into migrant shelters for children. Now, mind you, nothing actually changed. If you look at the pictures, there's nice bars on the walls. Nothing changed other than the media's outlook. Where is the outrage about this? Where is the outrage about an asinine immigration policy that is encouraging people to bring children unaccompanied and otherwise into a country? Guess who gets hurt? Our low-wage earners, who for the first time in modern history under Donald Trump, started seeing real wage growth. We see it time and time again. There's a double standard by which we live, but when you look at what's going on, if people were informed of the actual facts, rather than spoon-fed a narrative by big tech and the mainstream media, we wouldn't be in these things. There was a poll that came out just this week that said one in six people would not have voted for Biden had they known about the Hunter Biden scandal. Yeah. Where is Hunter? <laughs> Guys, I'm sure he's making billions in China right now. Don't worry. Don't worry. One in six, guys, 17% of the 80 million that voted for Joe Biden, wouldn't, had they even heard of the basics of his corruption? We were all talking about it, guys. It wasn't anything new, but that also shouldn't surprise us. We've been talking about Andrew Cuomo sentencing Nana to death for 10 months. But no one was gonna talk about it until they got their wishes. No one was gonna address Democrat incompetence. We believe all women until they accuse a Democrat. Then, not so much. But guys, that's why we have to stay engaged. That's why we have to stay in the fight. That's why we can't allow them to steamroll us like they have done for decades. When you look at what's going on just this week in Congress, you have Democrats petitioning major corporations, Comcast, Amazon, to ban conservative news outlets. Not radical parties. Fox News, Newsmax, OAN, just ban them. You don't see Republicans saying, let's talk about CNN as a place of disinformation. I mean, as a recipient of their ire for a couple of years, I can assure you that they were lying about Russia collusion. We all know that now, but no one actually brings it up because they can get away with it. They are able to do that. Big tech 
will silence you if you come out against it. They will crush you. They will call you racist and everything else. Just like, imagine, we'll bring back Cuomo, right? Imagine Ron DeSantis did what Cuomo has done over the last couple of years. He wouldn't be getting an Emmy, he'd be in jail. Right? Credible accusations of harassment swept under the rug. Verbal harassment swept under the rug. Hiding evidence from the DOJ swept under the rug. No problem, give him an Emmy. Remember Fredo when he was talking about it? Oh, for months, oh! Where's Fredo? He's so quiet these days. Why isn't Fredo talking about these things right now? Again, liberal privilege, you didn't know, we can't address that, really? You can't address that, but you had no problem joking around with massive Q-tips, making clowns of yourselves for months prior. That's what we're up against, folks. But together, we can win these fights. We have to be vocal. We can't be put in the corner. We must be out and engaged. And that's where you guys come in. So, I'm looking forward to Sunday. I imagine. I imagine it will not be what we call a low energy speech. And I assure you that it will solidify Donald Trump and all of your feelings about the MAGA movement as the future of the Republican Party. So thank you, CPAC. Thank you for being here. Thank you for the love. You guys are the best.